uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the retcon today. Fuck yeah. Uh, I didn't write any show notes because I didn't have time. <laughs> and I, uh, you know, fuck it. <laughs> it's going to be, uh, we've talked about, we've kind of like talked about this and been like circling it already. So yeah, this might not end circling up being, the drain, if you will. Yeah, this might not end up being super, super long. You know what is super, super long? What is? What, Jojo? These nuts. Wait, no. I should have <laughs> said my dick, not these nuts. Long nuts sounds like a medical condition. Oh, no. Please. <laughs> That's going to be the cold oh, open. Oh, my God. Yay. Was, that, was uh, that planned out, or did you actually make a mistake in what you said? No. <laughs> I was... Listen. I, ha- I only have, like, room in my brain for one level of joke. Okay. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, we're going to talk about the retcon there. Miss, however, if we didn't talk about what actually leads into the retcon, mm-hmm. uh, which is game over, so that's also going to be with this. Right. Uh, but just a recap for the viewers the retcon is like probably one of the most divisive things in Homestuck. And since we're only covering one thing today, I would like to talk about like sort of how, before we begin actually talking about what we're going to retool. What do we think of the the retcon in Homestuck as it exists, just in brief? Mm-hmm. We'll go uh, left to right. Um, okay, so my perspective on the retcon is as an archival reader exclusively, I never read Homestuck while it was updating. Um, right. So for me, the, re- the retcon presents this kind of like interesting thing that's sort of like out there hovering in the distance. Like you... You're reading the comic archivally, and you hit the the uh, the passcode pages, and that presents kind of an interesting mystery, and it's like, what the hell is that about? And then once you eventually get to the game over, and then the retcon, like to me, it felt actually pretty effective. Like I think I have a probably somewhat you know better view of the retcon than probably either of you two because like. For me, it wasn't a thing where I had to wait a long period of time or anything like that between updates. I just blasted through it. I got this, like, reset thing. Um, I I do have some issues with, like, how the actual retcon was handled. Like, not mechanically, but, like, the effect of it. And, like, I wish some stuff had been addressed differently. But we'll talk about that in the course of, like, the rewrite. But overall, I have a pretty positive view of the retcon. I think it, like serves a pretty interesting purpose in the story, and I think it it has a lot of potential to do some really interesting things, especially within the context of, like, Homestuck's kind of, like, larger meta-narrative. Yeah. Uh, Before I go, because I have sort of... um, I haven't talked about my feelings about it, and I want to reveal them last, but, Buggy, in contrast, I know you're not an archival reader. You read the updates. So, what do you think of the retcon as a someone who was not an archival reader um well i definitely remember when we first started getting like the if, like when it first showed up when when game over happened and then when we first started seeing the effects and Vriska came back like all of those were very momentous i was in college by that point so like i i remember sitting on like a friend's dorm room bed and like watching the horse flash where Vriska comes back and like yelling and throwing shit across the room. Uh, wow. Like, I had a very, I had a very, like, wo- I was just, I, I don't remember if I yelled any words or if I was just yelling wordlessly. I, mm-hmm. If I yelled anything, it was <laughs> That's the Vriska yeah. effect. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. God, it... <sighs> it's interesting because, like, I know that it's at least partially, like, 
I don't know. I can guess that it's at least partially that Andrew Hussey sort of realized that he fucked up with the way that things were going, so he killed a bunch mm-hmm. of people off and then backtracked. Or that was planned all along. I don't, I think it was probably some sort of organic combination of realizing he sure. fucked up and some of this was planned because, like, mm-hmm. thematically it does fit very well. But, like, we know that a bunch of this was seat of the pants. Mm-hmm. I... Yeah, I have some problems with the with like the, some of the effects, namely that like crucifying Vriska mm-hmm. upon the narrative kind of sucks, and then uh, yeah, I don't know it. I I want to actually have some sort of commitment with alternate timeline Vriska and Teresi right. if we're gonna have that because that sort of felt wishy washy, and then. Other than that, like, it does, it does kind of make sense that, like, they fail and they have to try again with another kind of reset. I do like that. Yeah. Um, and the game over as a flash is, like, infuriating, but, like, it, it works effective. It's pretty effective and it works with what? At the time, I was, like, kind of, I was pretty upset that, like, we were gonna backtrack that close to what felt like the end of the story, but... Since then, we've gotten a decent amount of media that, ha- that like, addresses some kind of, like, time travel or retcon, and I've, I've experienced more, uh, more media that already existed that does that, and I think this does it better than, say, mm-hmm. like, Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Like, I think this is, like, this is more... This feels a bit more thematically strong than yeah, Avengers Endgame. Yeah, I get what you're Endgame. saying. Like, Avengers Endgame was just, like, <clears throat> an excuse to go back through the movies again. Whereas this is, like, uh... Right. I guess more diegetic, you would say. Yeah, that works. Yeah, I'd say that's a good way of putting it. It feels a bit more necessary and a bit less like a cash grab. So, Homestuck is one of the only pieces of media that I know of that actually earns a retcon in any meaningful way. Because what Andrew Hussey did was, like Bucky said, this was not just a snap decision, like, oops, uh, ooh, got to go back and fix that. Mm -hmm. This was a coordinated retooling uh, of the entire comic, like going back into the comic, editing old pages with... More than just the links to, like, the new uh, Game Over pages, but also the arms that went around, the oil that uh, John spread around the the, the narrative. Mm-hmm. And it sets it up incredibly well. And I kind of love that. That is one of the most unique things to me about Homestuck, is that it has a retcon that it earns. And that is very powerful. Andrew Hussey is good at writing these things where he realizes like, all right, I need to fix something because this isn't working. And he puts in the effort to make it happen. Even more impressive, I think, is that the fact that he did this during the like, uh, for, for, (laughs) for lack of uh, a better, you know, way to describe this, the hive swap shenanigans. Yeah. Like the legal trouble that he was in with, uh, with all that. Like, this is wonderful. However, much like Andrew Hussey, for every amazing thing he pulls off, he fucks up something else. And the thing he fucks up is, you know, John goes around, he fixes everything, very painstakingly goes back through the comic at critical moments and retools things. But then that is all in service of bringing the worst character back (laughs) <laughs> uncritically that is so fucking infuriating to me because the retcon has like the most potential of any plot point in homestuck i think mm-hmm. you know all of homestuck is leading up to the retcon which makes it feel worse when it's just to bring back Vriska. it just feels yeah. so it, it turns from this long form like earned retcon to and immediately when Vriska Graham drops, it's self-indulgence. And other than that, except for the results, I love it. I think that 
it's great to like foreshadow uh, a retcon. I think the implementation on the actual website was great because it was the era of like after Flash was cool, so they needed something else to. It really it it uses the medium. It is good storytelling. It uses a different type of time travel than what we're used to. It introduces a lot of lore concepts. Uh, and then all of that great stuff is in service of resurrecting Vriska uh-huh. for no other reason than, like, girl boss power. I don't fucking know. Uh-huh. And then Vriska, like, solves everyone's problems off screen. <laughs> and that's the other thing that bugs me about the retcon is, like, you know, we get the Vriskagram which underlines the problem with the retcon that I don't think can even be fixed in a rewrite, which is we are now following characters that we don't know. Like Rose and Kanaya, the ones we follow, are fucking dead. They're in the dream bubbles now. Now we have a different Rose and Kanaya. The only two that remain are Roxy and uh, John, and then we see some of the ghosts like uh, Vriska in parenthesis, and I don't know. I have very strong feelings on the retcon. I think it could have been pulled off well. I think there are a lot of inherent problems with it that Hussey dodged. Uh, there are ones that he didn't dodge. And there are a bunch of cow pies he's like, stepped in on the way. Uh, so before we get into the retcon, let's talk about uh, Game Over. Because Game Over is like this integral part of... Basically, the retcon happens in three steps. There's Game Over, which is the apocalyptic culmination of, like, the alpha timeline. There's the actual retcon itself, where June, Terezi, and Roxy put everything in place. And then there's the result, which is basically Vriska Graham and the remainder, the back half of uh, Act 6. Um, so let's talk about first the Game Over. Uh and again, let's approach this. I think a good approach to do this would be uh, as an archival reader and then as a update reader because that's a great contrasting like way to look at it, and I think that'll yeah. bring some interesting things to light. Sure. Uh, so let's let's go left to right again. Janaya, what are your thoughts on Game Over? Okay, so um, I, I, Game Over, like I, I know we've talked about this before, is like from from the perspective that we're going on the rewrite and i think so you bring up a couple of interesting problems with the whole concept in canon which is that it doesn't always seem to know what it's trying to do like on 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 one hand it seems like it's you know oh this is the alpha timeline and then like you're rewriting the story but on the other hand you've got like dead Rose and Kanaya, which implies like a time travel thing. So it's like, I don't know that that's, that's not necessarily the most consistent thing there. Like I kind of get the, I kind of get the timeline shenanigans thing where it's like, it's only the alpha timeline, but there's still the divergent timelines. But then why is the retcon necessary? Why can't you like jump to another timeline, etc.? So like I, what I would do, and I think this is kind of like, the most coherent reading that I got for the retcon as it is would be to to emphasize that game over is the inevitable end of all the timelines. It is any timeline you're in, it is what happens for whatever reason. Like the conditions are set so far back in the timeline that you can't change them without rewriting the whole story. That's what, you know, that's what Scratch wanted. This is what what was planned all along. Um it's Lord English's machinations. It's yeah. Lord English's machinations, and like to emphasize that, I would, I, 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 it would be nice to add some stuff that really highlights how it is something that is going to happen no matter what. Like I don't know, have Dave like trying to go back in time, trying to to get onto another timeline, trying to find some way like around this, and just being completely unable to. Like it is a it is a fucking wall that goes through every single timeline. And, like, I don't know exactly how you'd want to approach it, but, like, one of the things that kind of, like, doesn't work as an archival reader, where you get the ability to kind of, like, look at this with an overview, is, like, some of the some of the stuff about how you're defining the retcon kind of doesn't make sense. Like, it's like, okay, if this is, if this is like, the main timeline that's always going to happen, then 
you know, why do you have, like, the alternate versions of the retconned characters? Like, that makes no sense. But, like, and if it's a, just another timeline, then how is it different than all of the, you know, Dave stuff and all that? And I think, like, it kind of comes down to the whole the whole concept of the alpha timeline in Homestuck is not always super consistently defined. Um, I I would like it to be a little more... I would like it to be a little bit more of a rigid barrier in the story that we're we're overcoming by subverting the story rather than like a little wall that you've got to hop over with Vriska. Um but like yeah, that that that's kind of my main gripe. Like I think the whole game over concept is good. Like I think it really um it it's good to have this like big you know, uh, inevitable, horrible thing that has to be dealt with. Like, there is no avoiding it. Um, and it, it prevents them from succeeding, just flat out. Um, so, like, I, I think the concept of Game Over is good, but it would be nice to have it be a little bit more, like, a little more consistent yes. about what exactly it means. I agree. Uh, Bucky, what are your thoughts? I'll go last. This is more of a visual thing, so I'm not sure that this is going to show up in, in what JoJo's actually producing, because it's kind of like, it's a combination visual writing thing. But basically, if we're going to have all of this framing device that Homestuck is a game, and you're going to have these like loading screens and showing how the game's broken down, I think I want it to be, I want it to be sort of to show uh, save points, I yeah, guess, I or like I kind of I think sort of thinking about an Undertale and Delta Rune and and some games that like specifically owe a, an amount to Homestuck, uh, like the the visual save points are iconic in there, but I still think it might be interesting if like uh, no, I think we discussed that you could that. Uh, when when we're looking at the retcon stuff, we're gonna see June change uh, the script. Yes. June's gonna see the script changing, right? Yeah. Because so we've got this like rising <laughs> action into game over, where like uh, the the beta kids show up, they get mind control, or they don't get. I don't. They get convinced to side mm. with the contest this time. Uh, they're not gonna be mind controlled. Or uh, uh, Jade and or, Jade is Jade more is like uh, she's kind of manipulated Jade. into it. Like the Grimbark is kind yeah. of the manifestation of her her anger and frustration with everything, and then that's sort of like twisted around by the contest. Like basically, aren't you tired of being nice? Don't you want to just go ape shit? But yes, like, use that against her friends. Also, I love that for her. Love that. Oh yeah, no, it's it's very good. <laughs> love that. Ah, uh, continue, buddy. <laughs> In in my like hypothetical mental retooling of the game over flash, I think uh, we should see the the flash should be mostly the same. I think we we have some the the way that we take out uh, the way that we approach taking out Jade or Jane might not necessarily be intent. I, no, I think most of it can can stay the same except for maybe Gamzy. I'm not really sure how we there's not there's not a lot of reason to like hate Gamzy and want to kill him here, I think. No, yeah, he would be a different figure in game over. I think he's like accidentally killed in some way, like some maybe something falls on him. Oh, maybe no. he he makes a honk when he gets crushed. <laughs> yeah. That's sad. Either either that or like he mysteriously disappears and imply Oh, maybe this is where maybe this is the Gamzy that becomes the caretaker for Caliborn and Calliope. Oh, Ooh. yeah, like he gets knocked into some kind of uh vat or not vat, what am I talking about? He <laughs> he gets knocked into um some kind of portal to uh, Calliope and Caliborn's Earth. Mm. So maybe game. I I think it'd be interesting if the Gamzee from Game Over survived, and the Gamzee and was was like it. It was inevitable that this specific Gamzee was going to do that. So that explains why 
pre-retcon Gamzy goals murder stuck, but we... No, no, wait, no, that... that They don't go quite... J- June won't go quite that far back. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no. So murder stuck would be the same, but uh, that particular Gamzy being the one that raises them, I think, is interesting. Uh, yeah, because it, means, that, okay. it, it, it like lends that. more inevitability to the retcon that it's necessary. It, it also does some uh, interesting shit with like how the story works, because like even with Game Over being retconned out of the story, that Gamzee kind of like steps out of the plot, basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's. That, that's one of the many unanswered questions that is raised in the retcon. Uh, I, I have a list of them, actually, <laughs> uh, but continue, Bucky. Uh, uh, so I think it'd be interesting if uh, Flash is mostly unchanged, but we start seeing, like, when characters die, we see their, like, lives tick down to zero. Like, maybe it, maybe it looks similar to, like, a smash brothers stock counter but like we see their video game lives like all hit zero and at the end of the flash i just add like would you like to try again i think changing the framing just slightly where it like really like we we had game over but i like to add like game over and Mm. then like it tight it there's like a you know, flashing underscore, and then it says game over, and then it and it goes to the next command line. It says, "Would you like to try again?" And then like you get yes and no, are. and then yes is selected, and then it ends, and then you can click to the next page. Like that, yeah. That uh, otherwise, I'd mostly keep this this flash the same because it's like it's very impactful. It works, and that's like the dawning moment where where you're like. Oh wait, the things really went horribly. I think it does. Yes. Other than the stuff that I that I just said, it, and I think the stuff that you're going to bring up, like if it for the most part works. Also, watch the game over reanimated the, by the reanimated yeah, project. Good. It came out well. Uh, Janai ordered. Yeah, real quick. Actually, your your comment about the like the save states and the uh like would you like to try again gave me a sort of an idea like something that you could use to visually represent it have you ever played like a, a like a final fantasy style rpg and you've gotten to the point where you save right before a fight that you then cannot win because you don't have like enough level or whatever resources mm-hmm. like that's basically what game over is they've saved before the fight yeah. that they then cannot win <laughs> yeah like a per or or in persona 5 when you if you like have one day left and you save mm-hmm. and you fuck yourself over by like you know you don't have enough time right just, you have to restart exactly um i like that analogy that's actually really good i'm glad you you guys like advanced the video game stuff because it's one of the things that uh me as a non-gamer uh sometimes like not throws out but like disregards that's not very interesting to me but i think it is a core part of like what makes homestuck homestuck so um my thoughts on game over are if this is if if homestuck has predestination if the alpha timeline is a thing that exists if there is time travel and you can create paradoxes by not doing things if this is predestination game over is the destination you know like, if you have a non-paradoxical alpha timeline, it will inevitably lead to game over. And we could show that by having, maybe Dave is like, maybe he has some moment where he, like, tries to change things or tries to readjust or is like, I've been trying to, like, get, I've, I've been trying to avoid this, mm-hmm. but I literally cannot. Yeah. This is the, this is the limit of my power as someone who operates with time within the boundaries of the rules. And so this will establish more clearly because I don't think it comes through in Homestuck that June's power is something else in terms of like objectivity. June's power is time travel. That's fine, but it's a different type of time travel than time powers in Homestuck. I know that's confusing. I'm so sorry. (laughs) I feel like it's important to distinguish it from time travel. Like you're, you're physically rewriting the story, which is not, time travel exactly like i know it kind of is similar but like yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> it's the difference between, you know, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure versus if Bill and Ted, like, went into the studio and rewrote right. the script so something else right, would happen. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, and we have to make that clear both in the narrative by way of, like, having someone uh, demonstrate how that works. One of the characters says, like, all right, time powers won't work anymore. This is an inevitable thing. Um, any timeline that was not doomed paradoxically but was a doomed timeline ended in game over, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you could have ghosts saying, like, oh, yeah, uh, we already hit the game over. And game over becomes not just an event but also something sort of on the horizon that is maybe foreshadowed a little bit. Maybe, like, something bad is going to happen. We have to figure out how to prevent it. Turns out you can't prevent it. Uh, It happens. We see it happen. And we have to establish that the Alpha Timeline now, there are two of them. Because that's kind of what happens, you know. There's the Alpha Timeline that is ends in game over. But then we also switch over to the Alpha Timeline that June and Roxy create. And... There are some problems that arise from that, but I think a lot of... We can talk about that when we get to the actual retcon itself. However, this solves the problem of like people not understanding what the fuck is going on, which I think is huge. I think that is a huge reason why the retcon is hated, because no one understands, like, okay, is this time travel? Okay, is this, like, a special power? I don't get it. Uh, why is Vriska here again? <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, I also think there... there you guys mentioned some of the the threads that aren't cleared up from the game over. Like, what? Where, where is Gamzee in all this? Um, and I think the other main issue that has a very elegant solution is if we have a new Alpha timeline, then that means that w- Caliborn and Cal- Calliope are not affected by the timeline split. Everyone gets two different versions except Calliope and Caliborn. Um... Which is weird, because the Caliborn we know is the one that stays and becomes Lord English. Like, there's only one. Uh, And there's only one Calliope, plus the Calliope that is, like, from some unspecified timeline that predominated against Caliborn. What I think would be interesting, because this is already written in, is if the Juju, John's powers, he goes back and he changes things, that is what somehow makes Cali predestinate. Uh, and that creates the Muse of Light, or the sorry, the Muse of Space, Cali that we see later fix things. Uh, does that make sense? I so I, one thing I would I would say at least for what we're doing, and like I I know that the game over in the comic is not consistent about this, or or it does imply that it's kind of just like another form of time travel. Is I would actually argue against having the like two timelines like. You're not making another timeline. That's what time travel does. It splits a timeline off into some, into another branch or or whatever horseshit about the alpha timeline. Like that's that's a okay. completely like made up bullshit that Helmstuck wants to it insists on sticking to that as if it were a real thing that matters. And it's not. <laughs> it's yeah. a it's a made up concept in the con in the con comic that's not consistent. What I would say is like you've got the story as an entity and you're changing it. You're, you're going back and you're crossing words out on the script and r- erasing stuff and redlining it. Oh. And, like, there's oh. not a different Rose and Kanaya, for example. They're the same Rose and Kanaya, and they have no okay. knowledge. That as far as they are concerned, what happened, happened. There's no ghost Rose and Kanaya Actually, or anything. And the only people that have a knowledge of there being a difference are, like, Roxy and June. <clears throat> I actually, okay, let's, let, let's shift okay. this. I've said a lot of things about the two timelines and how that works in Homestuck, yes. how there are two of them yeah. now. Fuck that. Yeah. Uh, screw it. <laughs> because later I wanted to talk about the problem of like, okay, now we're following a different set of characters. That's kind of fucked up. Um, but I, I just thought of a solution. And that is to really lean into Bucky's idea about the save file thing. That instead of, uh, instead of June's powers being time travel... June's powers are a la Undertale, saving and loading. So it's not... Mm, um, maybe. Here's my mm. idea. It's not time travel. It's not fixing things. It is, like, 
like you say, going back and like going to an old save. So we don't have the problem of, okay, this is not the rows we're following. It is like, well, you're, you're still, you're, you're erasing the future. You're, basically. you're still like going back to the old save thing is you're still, you're still running into the problem that all of the conditions still exist the same. So you're always going to hit game over, but however you want to frame it, like I'd, I'd been envisioning it as like rewriting the script of the comic. You could envision it as like editing the save file or hacking the, hacking the save file. But like, okay. Yeah. yeah I like, like that. You're, you yeah, are that, that's fundamentally really changing everything. Gene finds a cheat code. To the point of like, it is no longer the same work of fiction anymore. You've gone back and you're like, you're saying, okay, this, <laughs> this sucks that we all die. I'm going to go back and edit the script, hack the, the, edit the save file, whatever, however you want to frame it as a device. Like, and then like what you're doing is you're breaking away from the version of the script that Doc Scratch and Lord English are relying on. And you've created a wholly new work. Like there isn't a branch timeline. All of the characters are the same characters, but now their inevitable fate or now their potential yeah. fate is different, basically. Oh, okay. I have... I. I you have synthesized my idea into a new one, which is instead of a save file, it's console commands. Yes. Right? So, I mean, whatever so way like, you want to frame it, there's lots of ways you could, as yeah, long as you're like, fundamentally changing the core of the, the work itself. That's the key bit. Yeah. However you want to frame it. It's like in Elder Scrolls when you give yourself like a hundred wheels of cheese. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. Now June is going back <laughs> to the old save files and you could even have these predestined people comment on that. Like Doc Scratch could say like, uh, I have no idea how you got this uh, item, but like, okay, <laughs> you know, my my shit is still going to happen. And I think you could also change how that works by, you could show that the future is changing mm. as well. Um, because that's the one thing that Dave's time travel cannot do. He cannot change the future because the future is already there. June's stuff could. Right, it's, it's, um, she's rewriting. Without worrying about yeah paradox. she's recreating yeah. the work itself because Dave has to exist within oh, the framework yeah. of of what has happened or exactly happen. because who the fuck cares about paradoxes when you're using fucking console cheats right. like no, you know uh then you can just explain it like you know if if a paradox comes up from what we change you can very easily go back and say like all right well and then June can fix the that game over as it exists when you start out is Eventually, the script ends with the line, rocks fall, everybody dies. And uh, June is crossing that out and allowing them to write more. It's like that, however you want to frame it, there's lots of ways you could using different analogies. But the, the end result is that the entirety of the script changes, which means there isn't another version of the characters out there. Like there might be, there might be knowledge of that potential, like, Terezi having some awareness of like there being that like other version of the script that used to exist that's that's still a thing you could play around with but like there aren't like game over ghosts like no those characters that died during game over haven't they don't die anymore aren't dead yeah, any. so yeah, like, yeah they retroactively did that's not one die. of the things that Homestuck uh, is really inconsistent about <laughs> well that would be good because when game over doesn't happen, when they are prepared enough, you could have a line that Condi says, like, I don't understand, like, I don't, it's, it's, it is impossible that you have, I don't know, for instance, like, the hammer of Zilly who or something, you can't, you can't have had that, that's a paradox, or that can't exist in this universe, and June is just like, well, I did, I made it, so, whatever. <laughs> well, I do. And that could be very cool, that could be cool, because that also plays with Roxy's powers of like pulling shit out of nowhere, the rogue of void. And it also plays with uh Therese's powers, the seer of mind, uh being able to like so June's maybe June's retcon powers are like, you know, she alone cannot control them and they need to be tempered by her her friends, like a seer who can actually see the console and Roxy who can like interface with it. It's whatever, whatever we whatever ends up happening, I think that would also differentiate it from the time travel enough. I don't know if we're like talking too fucking like vaguely and cerebrally. Uh, I hope the viewers at home can understand what the fuck we're talking about because I'm like, I keep it's 
one of the things I like about Homestuck is the fact that you kind of get confused by it because there's this thing with Homestuck that I love of like, uh, you, you wonder, okay, how did this happen? I know it did happen and I'm accepting that, but like how? And maybe that answer comes like way down the line. Maybe you have to like read a wiki to get that answer. But I think that's an interesting aspect of Homestuck because it allows you to, uh, it, it's a very deep narrative. And as I said before, that's not inherently good. It can actually be incredibly alienating, but in a lot of ways it's good. Um, like how the fucking time travel works and uh, Sky and uh, the class specs and all that shit. But um, before we get too bogged down in this bullshit, <laughs> let's uh, move on to the actual retcon itself, which I can sort of feel us already moving to. Um, let's talk about what actually would change to make a better timeline. Uh, we'll start with Bucky, then Janaya, then me this time. Bucky, what would, how, how do we fix, how, so, look at it this way. How do you fix game over? If everyone's going to get killed by the Condis, Arania, and, uh, I don't remember who else was in game over. Uh, oh, uh, Jane and Jade. If everyone's, if that's going to happen, how do you fix that? Okay, so the first, I think, most obvious question is, like, is Vriska coming back or not? Um... I would say, so, okay, I'm going to answer that in two ways. If she does, then she has to be shitty and terrible and, like, miserable because we have to show that, like, the the Vriska who got character growth is the better Vriska. Or we can just say, no, Vriska did not come back, even though she really, really wants to. Um, That is, you know, that's TBD, but that is how I'll answer that. John, June, and Terezi would probably want Vriska to come back to varying degrees. Roxy would probably go along with it because she has no idea what Vriska is like, but June and Terezi seem to like her well enough. Um, <laughs> oh, your friend, you want to bring back your friend Vriska? Okay, um, that seems, that seems reasonable. I like I like gamer girls. I'm a gamer oh, she girl. She seems cool. You see that she's also oh, a trans gamer okay. girl. Okay. Okay. Oh my god! I just had a I had a horrible idea. What if What if they bring Vriska back, but she and okay, picture this. Therese or uh, Therese and June to test their powers. They're like, all right, let's change it so that like Therese never kills Vriska. Um, they do that, and. It backfires horribly, and like Vriska makes game over worse, <laughs> and they have to like fix it otherwise because that would that would be funny, and it would also I like undermine what happens like in Homestuck. That a lot, to be honest, like um, I as like a I, meta thing, so do that's I. really funny. <laughs> They're like, "Oh, Vriska will know what to do," and then she like joins Goddess or something. Okay, and then we can actually Ugh. then we can keep uh, dead character development Vriska uh, meets up with a dead alt timeline Terezi and you can still have like that moment but it isn't contra like that's that's just where Vriska ends up period there's not like an alternate real Vriska who didn't get character development and didn't didn't end up with Terezi like that's just that's just where oh Vriska God. ends up and it can even be because of the nature of paradox space no matter what June changes there will be an alternate timeline where it went differently. So we could still have an alternate timeline. Uh, I don't know, whatever. It's, we can, we'll have an alt timeline Terezi for Vriska, and that's enough. Um, but, uh, okay, so let's say, I, I let's go with that. Let's go with, the, the, we have a couple of attempts, and one of the attempts is let's bring Vriska back, and that doesn't work. So if that doesn't work, then... What they try to do is they try to knock Vriska out and it doesn't work. So that means Terezi does have to kill Vriska, and that's a thing that's going that's going to be a consequence that carries through to the end of the comic. So that's something we have to keep in mind. Um Yeah, they they like bring Vriska back, she fucks things up, June is like, Alright, let's leave her dead. <laughs> and, 
Oh, man. And then Cherezi's like, I j-, And then, so I think they're kind of operating, wherever they're operating from, their memories aren't going to change until they leave. So Cherezi's like, all right, well, I didn't forget killing her, so that's fine, I guess. Uh, so the things that need to happen are that, like, this, this is, we've started discussing a little bit of this. Jade and Jane need to not be manipulated into joining the contest. So. So Roxy, so Roxy points out yeah, that like that, that's huge. Jane seems manipulated partially because she thinks that none of her friends like her. So so Roxy's like, I need to tell Jane that I have a gigantic fucking crush on her. And then June is like, Oh my god, Squee! And Teresi's like, Well, that's I'm always down for more <laughs> women who are into each oh, other. My yeah. God. And June's probably like squee, and then Terezi's like, June. I can't believe that that Carcat, w- I, I like, I can't believe Carcat's not here for this. Actually, I'm very glad Carcat's not here for this. I'm gonna rub his face in it later. Or Nepeda. Oh yeah, because Nepeda's alive, and or we'll stay. Oh hey, we have to put Nepeda into game over so we can kill Nepeda off, right? We have to, because Nepeta arrives on the meteor, so we have to put her in there and have a way for her to die and yeah. then not die after we do the retcon. Cool, great. She That's could great. fight Jade because, like, cat versus dog. Okay, we're, we're getting off topic. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's cute. Um, Okay, so that's Jane and Roxy probably is like the the moment that I was going to tell her was sometime on her birthday and they didn't because shit got fucked so maybe we'll like yeah we'll work it in on their birthday and there's no trickster mode anymore so I think that basically what happens instead is like they don't get pissed drunk and they are managed to like they they go they all go god tier like in a responsible manner and right. they ha- and like that forges yeah some... that Roxy zaps all the booze yeah around. and that forges some like stronger bonds and that that's maybe a little bit fucked up but uh because then now they're gonna have to like now they might actually have to like kill each other in order to go god tier oh no I guess we're keeping we're keeping that they go god tier when yeah no yeah it's it's still that that would still be fine because like uh. Condi and Jack still blow up Durs and Prospit. So as long as they still get to Durs and Prospit, they can still go God tier in the same manner. Because that had that had nothing to do with uh, um, Trickster Mode or whatever happens okay. in our and reading. then And then so June probably realizes that there's some... There's, there's like, ways for her to, like, make Jade feel more... Uh, like, ta- like there's ways she could have interacted with Jade better. There's, like, a couple of specific character interactions on, like, the ship journey. Uh, yeah. Maybe we write in, like, a couple times that June, like, dropped the ball with yeah. Jade. Uh, and, like, drove, or, or drove them apart in some way to make Jade sort of more bitter. Because I think that you can still have, that, that would leave Jade and Jane with, like, those sort of lingering threads of, like, pissed offedness that the Condes can get with so we don't fix those because that would be like cheating a character arc basically what we fix is like jade and jane having a stake in not siding with the contest yeah does that make sense so they're 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 still pissed off and they're like well maybe i agree with the contest a little bit but in the end what changes is they're like well no i can't you know my friends matter more to me than some space witch uh and uh, and then, yeah. so I think the troll, Terezi needs to administer one of those moments to the trolls as well. Um, yeah. Or, Terezi could be in on, like, Arania duty to stop Arania from showing up. That that makes sense. So what would, so that means, then, then so, so, the, we have to stop, we have to make sure that the kid, kids group stay together so that they can complete the game and we have to make sure that uh the con the the condes is dealt with and that's going to be taken care of by having everybody alive and then so yeah the last thing is arania and arania gets the ring how do we say that arania gets the ring this time we didn't figure that out we prevent somehow somehow we prevent her from getting the ring uh I think I've been talking for long enough. I'm going to hand the floor over to yeah. <laughs> you, you you did some you, you did some good fucking Janiya? work though. Yeah, Janaya. Yeah. Uh, 
So we Janiya, figured fix, out. Fix Arania. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's perfect. Janaya, you love her. You, you can fix Arania. This is your. <laughs> yeah. <moment. laughs> um. Actually, I have a couple of thoughts. Janaya cracks knuckles. I have a couple of thoughts on a couple of things. Um. Yeah, one right. is Vriska. Um. I would argue that I I don't I don't I really don't super love the idea of the like any anything that smacks of like multiple timelines because that undermines this being a different thing. I also don't love the idea of Vriska staying dead because I think it would be nice to actually show because like dead Vriska gets the character development kind of sucks too because it it feels no, very yes, like okay. Yes, cheap and that's perfect. and like half-assed in the original comic. It's just better than she becomes an apathetic mess. Yes, I totally agree. In in the original comic, like Dead Briska gets the character development is just better than the alternative. Like it still feels a little kind of eh. But like, what I would say is that you, I like the idea of them like trying to bring Briska Briska back and like Briska tries to be important and it fucks everything up. And they try again, and, like, Vriska does some other stupid shit, and they try again. And then, I actually wrote a story about this basic plot line, where the end res- the end thing that Vriska has to do to stop fucking up the timeline is to realize that sometimes she just needs to sit the fuck down and stop trying to be important. Like, that's the one key thing that she needs to learn before anything else, is that sometimes it's not about her. And, like, I would like to see the Vriska gets saved, and then they're able to convince her to chill the fuck out and let everyone else handle it. And then she can get more character development as the comic as the comic goes along. Like, actually getting character development where she's learning to accept that she's not the best special character that gets to drive the whole comic. Like, I like the idea of a Vriska that gets to basically, okay, like... Okay, so they try a couple... Yeah, yeah, they try it a couple times. Vriska fucks things up because she wants to be important. Then they're able to convince her, like, hey, just, like, chill the fuck out and go do something else. Um, also, I, I don't know, I, I, had a, I had a wild thought, and I don't know if this would work, but uh, the idea that the way that they get Arania to not do the thing is they just get her to start talking to Vriska... And the two of them just, like, kind of, like, feed off of each other's bullshit long enough for them to do whatever else they need to do. I don't know if that would work or not. But the idea is funny to me, so I'm putting it out there. <laughs> um, um, can I propose a, a different how to fix Arania? And I think you might like this, Janiyah. Terezi gets Nepeta, who is alive and can sleep travel to the meteor to ship Arania. <laughs> she just needs to, like... I don't, I I don't think that. that her being in a relationship fixes her, but I think it's, like, something that she ends up focusing on so much she can't... It might not be a perfect relationship, but she can't be evil... Because she's too busy trying right. to be in a relationship. Oh my god! So uh, this this is an opportunity to use one of my favorite like it can be good chips, but it's often not, which is Sporm and Arania. Uh, because those two would, I was gonna say those two, especially the way that we've written Porum, would be able yeah. to like Porum would be able to like stand up against her <laughs> bullshit enough that the two of them would just like keep each other occupied. Hey, this is future JoJo. I thought it would be a good idea to say a lot of this stuff we're talking about with the Dancestors is actually from the Dancestor episode featuring Yo, It's Crow, which is, of course, now free on YouTube. So if you want more information about what we're talking about, uh, check that one out. And Arania wouldn't even, yeah. like, th- th- that would, like, dead end the plan. I love that. I, I like that idea a lot. On God, we're going to get you laid. <laughs> 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 Mio voice. Uh, I... I... <laughs> Uh, it should be, I think what happens is that, like, it ends up being this, like, vacillating, uh, yes. flushed pitch relationship. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's, it's sort of, like, directly contrasting Vris Resi, because the thing is that, like, they, like, we're going to make it clear that they don't really get their, their relationship is sort of, like, vaguely <laughs> dysfunctional, but they're having a lot of fun, and really, it just needed to distract Arania long enough that she can't interfere. Yeah, it needs to, 
I, I think the biggest thing with Arania is that like she gets a bad influence from Vriska. And so if there if there is anyone else in the dream bubbles that Arania could talk to, I think that she would not do that. I think that she would be like because she already thinks Vriska sucks, right? Because, you know, she gets pissed. So if you have Nepeta being like, all right, Arania, I'm going to give you some attention and, like, pay attention to you. Right. That would be great for Arania. Like, no one pays attention to Arania. That's great. Right. It's not – it doesn't have to be functional in in every sense. It just needs to be, like, adequate to she keep needs a friend. Uh, Arania, Arania needs to uh, hang out with the girl for a little bit. Vriska needs to realize that she's not – Riska needs to realize that she's not special and needs to chill the fuck out. Um, and then the other, the other elements, uh, I, I love the, the whole Jane Roxy idea. That's good. Um, like, yeah, that's the Jane needs to realize that people care about her. Um, Jade. Uh, so uh, something that I would propose, cause like Jade's thing is that she's kind of like fallen into her sort of rage. And I, I, think i proposed this previously but if not i'm gonna bring it up for the first time um which is that i would have the sort of key change be that june encourages uh rose to talk to jade because rose has experience with a similar kind of like all-consuming rage-based thing that she had to overcome and like having that touchstone I th- I don't think I don't think it's going to stop Grimbark from happening, but what it would do is give Jade enough of a like this person knows what I'm going through and cares about me that she's able to pull oh. herself out of it. So like she goes Grimbark and she starts to do things and then realizes, wait, this is this is bad. This is like what Rose was describing with the the horror terrors. I'm going to like and then she's able to stop mm-hmm. herself. You could have even like also I like Jade and Rose talking. in the pre retcon. You could have Jade be like maybe she almost goes Grimbark and other people around her are like, no, you have to repress that. That's an evil power. Mm, but then she talks to right. Jade or she talks to Rose and she's like, oh, you can like let a little bit of that flow through you. And then when it comes time to game over, they can use uh, Grimbark maybe to their advantage. That'd be cool. Um, I agree. I mean, they don't even have to. I mean, Jade's a very powerful character, even without that. Just, like, the fact that she's able to bring herself back from that. And, like, Rose has a lot of baggage with having gone uh, grimdark. And, like, I think that, you know, ha- having the understanding that, like, she has a she has a friend that knows exactly what it feels like to go through that, that doesn't want to see her end up in the same way and have to deal with the same trauma. Like, I think that that means a lot. Also, I like the idea of Rose and Jade talking to each sure other do. more. Uh... But not in the monkey's paw curls <laughs> homestuck two way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really. God. Uh, Rose makes, like, memes with Dave about, like, um, you know, she'll, like, po- post a picture of, like, a skeleton and it's, like, me when I don't talk to a space player for two days. Something like that. <laughs> yes. Uh, Space and light players, yeah. I'm telling you. There's That's a funny. thing there. <laughs> no, I like that a lot. I, I think that there are a couple other stray problems that also need uh, to be fixed with, like, Jack, the the Jacks, uh, Condi, Dirk being, like, teleported away. Y- we can, you know, th- that's that's nuts and bolts stuff. We covered the biggest ones. Um, there is one thing I, w- I do want to say about the retcon powers, and that is... We need to have some kind of stakes. Um, maybe it's like we, we have to put some kind of limit on it because one of the biggest questions that comes up later is like, OK, well, if, you know, all this stuff went wrong, why couldn't June just wreck on it? Why couldn't June just wreck on X, Y, Z? Uh, and to avoid that, because, you know, it's like an Ant-Man crawling into Thanos's ass thing. It's like a a solution that is not addressed narratively. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I know. For, for, I, for the viewers, I do too. <laughs> it's there's a joke that online about like, well, why didn't Ant Man just crawl into Thanos's ass and grow? You know, he could have done that. Um, it's like, don't build in a uh, don't build in a solution to your problem that will also solve like the whole story. Uh, which I think that retcon powers do. 
So what we could do is just have some, you know, line about like, all right, if we do this too much, it's like going to corrupt the entire universe and destroy it or something. I mean, you've got, if you're going to go with the idea that like they have to redo it a couple times because Vriska keeps like fucking <laughs> shit up. Yeah. Then like make it so that like, this is something that like takes more and more out of June every time she does it. And it's yeah, like, okay, that's good too. I can only do this once more. We need to talk to her dumbass and make sure she doesn't do this again. Hey guys, I'm ethereal now. Uh, we need to stop. <laughs> right. Like have that, maybe have that be the thing where, where they impress upon Vriska the seriousness of this. Like Vriska's like, Oh yeah, no, no problem. I'm alive. I can fix everything. I'm like, no Vriska, you've done that like two or three times and it always ended badly and we don't get another shot. Why don't you go like chill in the corner? <laughs> Vriska, buddy, bad news. Ah, jeez, <laughs> We got to leave you dead. I'm really sorry. The, we, we came I, to a decision. It's unanimous. I'm really sorry. We got to leave you dead. Like I, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't want to leave Vriska dead. I just want <laughs> no, Vriska no. to learn that Vriska is not the most important girl ever. They like, I, I think they might like, they try just knocking her out. They try knocking her out and then like putting her in jail for the duration of the trip. And that turns out to not work. And then they try knocking her out uh, and then like having her tied up. And then they like literally just, I, I think, I think what they might do is they knock her out and then they bring her to where they're t adjusting the timeline and they're like, Vriska, look, you keep fucking it up. You can look at you fucking it up. Oh, can you please that would be funny. not fuck yeah. it up this time? Like, literally, yeah, they have, like, the fact, this moment. like, they, they have to, they have to literally put her in front of it. I think this is very meta-narrative, Homestuck. They put her in front of, like, uh, like a screen, like... They have her read the script. <laughs> they have her, it, maybe not reading the script, but, like, putting, putting her in front of, like, you know, tiled panels of, like, everybody dying because of something that she did. And they're like, can you just please like get a handle on your shit a little bit <laughs> and she's like huh all right well that gives me a lot to think about and then like maybe it's partially because she seeks it out and partially organically like she needs a kick in the ass i think like getting like having like hey yeah. every time you try to censor yourself everybody dies is a pretty good kick in the ass yeah <laughs> You literally just need to do nothing. Literally, all you need to do is nothing. <laughs> Vriska, I, I think that, okay, on some level, I think Vriska would thrive if she just accepted that, like, I, I think that Vriska has a disease called wants to be protagonist syndrome because yeah. she wants so desperately to be, like, a hero of some story. She makes up stories in her head and right. she makes up, like, little places that she can be her hero. She wants to kill Beck Noir, et cetera, et cetera. If you just, and you can't just tell her, like, you don't have to be the hero of Riska. Because I don't think she wants to be, like, on a uh, conscious level. I think she thinks that that would suck. I, I think she needs to understand yeah. that her being the hero isn't, it, it, it would be inevitably miserable. leads to disaster. Yeah. It, it hurts, it hurts her and everybody around her. And, like, I think that having that be, like, really, like, viscerally thrust in her face is, like, that's the thing that's going to start to... Like start the process of her like realizing, oh shit, I, I I like this was better when I just like didn't try to be the hero. Like, no, yeah, it's okay for me to step back and like. <laughs> I, that would be great Vriska, for her. I will kiss you if you just sit over there for like two hours. I thought you were being car cat <laughs> for a second. No, I was like, oh god. <laughs> um, but uh, I I I agree. I think that if. Because Vriska is one of those bitches who's like, don't be such a special snowflake. But then she entirely like, or like, you she shouldn't just that. get, you yeah, shouldn't exactly. just, she's like a Karen who's like, my kids shouldn't get participation prizes. But then she like bitches to their parent or the teachers if, if they don't get A's. <laughs> yes, exactly. And Vriska needs to be like, um, just, just shown that you can just chill. Vriska, you don't have, yes. there's no reason you have to do this. And I think that if you just demonstrate that to Friska in some fashion, you know, she won't get it immediately, but she will, like, understand that this is a problem. And I think that, <laughs> or they just show her, like, 
Vriska, you fail miserably every time you try to be a hero. So why are you trying? Like you never, you never <laughs> succeed ever. And Vriska You're really bad at that. And Vriska like, really bad at it. Because Vriska would have a, she would. That seems harsh, but I think Vriska would see that and realize, mm. like, oh, I don't have to do this. This is awesome. I can just chill. Right. Because that's that's sort of what happens in the the in vanilla homestuck where she joins mina and like but that that's like an apathetic giving up Vriska needs to give up in a an active sense where she's like oh i'm supposed to help my friends i'm supposed to like rely on others i can do that i don't i don't have to be like the lone hero of the, my story she needs to understand where where she needs to step back and let other people pick things up and like not have to you know, like she doesn't actually have to do anything and in fact shouldn't you do anything because she keeps fucking things up <laughs> and i think it would be cool in in doing that she has some like maybe she it could be a joke she has some like small off-screen victory like she beats a jack which is like and she's like she's, she's the pissed. one that does the She's the one that does like the what? Who was the one that was like a fucking joke in Collide? Uh, Jake. Yes. She she's the one that does that exactly. Part. <laughs> and she like or or she just like fucks around with the felt and like has fun distracting them. Uh, oh I think God. that would be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool for her. Um, that would actually be pretty cool. I think, and and then she can still have the same thing that she does in the plot, which is like because what she uh, June could show her like. When you're trying to help other people, when you got the juju for me, like that was really cool. Thank you. And Vriska, he'd be like, "Oh, when I help other people, it's it's good. <laughs> um, that's amazing. I never thought of that ever. Uh, yeah, it could be like that <laughs> moment. But, um, yeah, Vriska is cool. I love Vriska, um, and I think that I, I do too. I there's like a lot a of lot. like potential she had that got totally wasted by the retcon and bringing her mm -hmm. back and like having her berate the cooler version of her um yeah uh you know that character development could happen and most importantly it would all be on screen because it would be during the actual process of retconning instead of in some asinine briskogram right because in this way if you if you just say all right we we're not making a new timeline we're just rewriting a couple things then you don't have that sense of like these are different people you yeah no the same they're guys. not they're just you're just getting rid of the like you know, the last little tale that leads up to game over and you're actually giving, in many cases, you're giving them a future. Like, they don't have a different past or whatever. They just have, like, slightly different, slightly different elements that allow them to make different choices and for that narrative to continue in a way that isn't controlled by Lord English um, and Doc Scratch and all that. Yeah. I think it would also be cool to... Uh... This is just my fucking thing. I, I don't know if this has a place in the rewrite, but I, I like the idea of instead of killing the Condes, we like in you know, uh imprison imprisoner. Uh or like find know. some way and th this can be a topic for later, but I like the idea and I'm drawing some parallels in what I've written so far of the Act Six stuff of you know, she really loves alternate universe John. And her seeing June again might, like, change her in some way. Like, you know, June being involved in the final battle, she could be like, oh, my God. I have another shot with, like, a daughter. Uh, that'd be interesting, maybe. I don't know. Um, I just like the condes. I, 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 want her to die. I, love, I love her. No, I, I mean, like, <laughs> cool. I kind She's of... She's so badass. I, I, I don't know. I'm don't have any strong feelings on that and i'd have to think about it as far as like how you would present it but like i don't have anything inherently against the idea of having a a villain that is dealt with in a way other than murdering them i think that that's that's often a <laughs> yeah, good thing it could be a Vegeta <laughs> moment where it's like uh i am still ideologically opposed to you but like i'll help you out because because I, I, the the main thing is, I think she has a, a huge reason to like hate Lord English, and if she saw June like, oh, you can change that. That's badass. Please let me join you. And she like talks to June, and she's like, yo, I don't want to fight you anymore. Please, like, can we kill Lord English? And June is like, oh yeah. And then after that, you won't you won't like kill anyone anymore. And Connie's like, 
uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> there are some issues that come up with the fact that this is someone that's been at the head of a absolutely brutal, like, genocidal empire. And, like, I don't necessarily think that it's a character that's just like, yeah, I'm just, like, chill I'm good now. now. No, it would have to be, like, you know, I'm good now, after this, but... you are going to prison forever. Sorry. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. There's probably ways that you could do it. I don't. I don't know off the top of my head, nor do I have the current mental capacity to think about it. But Fair. it is something I would be willing to entertain. Understandable. <laughs> it's been a long day. It has been a long day. Uh, besides that, I think we've actually found some like good... So basically, to summarize everything we've talked about, instead of the retcon being a retcon, it is more like a... We have some fundamental problems that happen during Game Over, such as uh, Arania showing up, such as Jade going Grimbark, that now Terezi, Roxy, and June have to solve. And, you know, that's cool. And then we solve them in a different manner, involving, you know, Vriska and stuff. Um, that's great. I love it. Uh, no notes. We make a new alpha timeline. No you know, parallel universe bullshit, no, you know, J Rose and Kanaya getting left behind. It's basically shifting from Bill and Ted time travel to Back to the Future time travel. Does that make sense? You kind of. Because, uh, more 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 meta narrative or shitty than that. But yeah. like Yeah, you're 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 doing away with the idea of branching timelines right. in this case, but you're actually just changing the story itself. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh it could also be said that like well, I don't know. Uh, we, we, we we don't have to get into, like, the super fucking nitty-gritty yet. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, no. I think the viewers understand, like, is what, what we're getting at. Um, yeah. At least I hope to fucking God. It was fine. I'm going to name this episode, like, like mm. timey-wimey bullshit or something. Oh, God. <laughs> Wibbly wobbly timey. God, remember when oh, that was, like, I a did, thing? Yeah, uh, I, I... That people I, enjoyed I, I, like, unironically. Un but it was fine, because I was in high school. <laughs> anyway. High school, like, cringe. I was too. I'm so sorry, Bucky. Oh, <laughs> I remember watching David Tennant's dumb face no. on the front TV. Yeah, exactly. Our next podcast, rewriting Doctor Who. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I mean, if you want to do that on your we own have, time, we, we have we have uh, rewriting Rick and Morty, rewriting uh, what have we talked about? Rewriting <laughs> hey, you Ender's said it Game. Those are true things. We have not said any of <laughs> this these is all things. fake. Don't, don't don't hold out for those. Stop lying to the people. <laughs> Stop lying to the viewers, JoJo, for one fucking episode. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's all been a grift. Um, it's yeah, a grift hey, to do to get you excited about something. about get you excited about podcasts that never will never exist. <laughs> right, it's like it's a grift to make you think it's about writing fiction. I don't fucking right. know. <laughs> uh, fucking okay. I uh I'm sorry, I got distracted. I saw a pair of tits on Twitter. It was great. Um uh -huh. anyway. <laughs> oh let's talk about uh sorry, I'm trying to find the it uh, Twitter did that thing where it like shows you a post and then immediately refreshes. Oh yeah, so, you wanna find the tits? What? You wanna find the tits? <laughs> You, are you trying to shame me Again? for looking at tits? Because like that's not gonna work. No, I'm I'm just saying that like you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna expend effort to go find them. Yeah, during a podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm sorry, everybody. This is bullshit. This is this sucks. Um, I never claimed to be good at podcasting. Uh, that is true. You have not claimed that, and I will not. So, so I'm looking at the outline that you put together real quick for this episode, Jojo, and uh, yeah. point number one was game over, and point uh -huh. number two is the retcon itself, parentheses, Terezi, June, and Roxy. Uh -huh. And then the, number three says what to do with 
<laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and it just stops. So uh, I am intrigued. What to did find I mean by what that? The third point is Vriska. Were you gonna say Vriska? <sighs> no. What the hell did I mean? Oh no. Past Jojo. What what, what runes did you leave me? <laughs> Um, I appreciate you getting us back on track, Bucky, because I would have just gone on and on about nothing for our remainder of time. I'm um, also pretty good at that. But... What to do with? Uh, I think what I meant was just like what to do after game or uh, the retcon, and we can cover like the specifics of because after the retcon, the problem becomes how to beat Lord English, and that's its own can of worms that we're going to talk about in the next episodes. But directly after the retcon, I think we just need to, like, take stock of, like, what changed and what happened. Mm-hmm. And I I, uh, I have an idea there. So, like, I don't necessarily dislike the idea of kind of, like, vignettes, kind of like Vriskagram, but less Vriska-centric and less trite. Like, Vriskagram was cute. It just, like sucked in its implications but like you know i i don't think there's anything inherently wrong with maybe showing some vignettes of like how these things change especially for things like the jane and the jade stuff that leads into the changes that are made later where they're able to excuse me where they're able to make a difference you know a different choice during game over um or during the events that would become game over except they're not anymore so like I think showing some of that would be would be cool, um, you know, depending on how much you want to like. Uh, obviously, there have been some changes we made to uh, like the meteor stuff that maybe like didn't. I mean, the the fucking the thing about the retcon in Homestuck as a canon work is it's so Vriska centric. Like it's like. The whole point, like you said at the beginning, the whole point is bring Vriska back, and then it shows how great Vriska is, and Vriska fixes everything. And, like, I've heard the interpretation that that's, like, not necessarily reality. Like, that's kind of, like, Vriska's perspective. But, like, I mean, that's not a thing we're, we're like, told. And also, it doesn't really matter, because it still kind of sucks. And, like... I still like certain things like I don't want to retcon away things like uh, Gamzee and Rose having a conversation like that stuff. I mean, I feel like we're, we're shifting the focus. I feel like we're shifting the focus of the retcons effects away from Vriska and Vriska adjacent people to uh, like everybody, especially like Jane and Jade for obvious reasons, because we're not having Vriska just put Jade to sleep like, ooh, that fixes everything. Vriska. Um, because we're actually having Jade like talk, you know, fi- figuring her shit out with Rose. Um, like we're actually, I, I don't know. I feel like we're shifting the balance over more towards like Rose and June and Jay and uh, Jane. So, um, I don't know. Maybe showing some of those like effects in a in a vignette would be would be cool. Just not not Vriska centric. Like Vriska's there, but you know, she's just there. She, you know, show her like learning to fucking chill the hell out or something like that. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Fucking. I think that at the end of the day, my main criticism of, uh, uh, the retcon is the Vriska thing. Like I said, at the top, everything else conceptually is great. So just, it's interesting. Yeah. The Vriska thing and the inconsistencies as far as, like, what exactly it means. And, like, I feel like that we've tightened that up pretty well. And, you know, the Vriska thing, TM. <laughs> yeah. The the Vrisk, the Vrisk shoe. Uh, that didn't work. The Vrisk shoe. Yeah. That, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was real close. It was something. <laughs> it, was, it was less than nothing. So. It, sure. Or, uh, <laughs> Vrisk, no, that's not, what that, that, that's not what that phrase means. Um, it was more than nothing. <laughs> Whatever. It was more than it was uh, less than nothing. <laughs> this sucks. I suck today. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, quite frankly, I think that's good for the retcon. Yeah, you know. Um, I don't think we missed anything. Uh, it's nice to devote a whole episode to like something so large, but also this is the opposite of fucking Hivebent. Hivebent is like. Mm-hmm. 
uh, is is way too much. But this was like, you know, we can devote a whole episode to it and like still have fucking time to to breathe. Whereas Hive Bent was like, I remember we had to like to set time limits for how long people talked. Um, we also had five uh, hosts on that one, so. Uh, that was a lot of people. But yeah, I think that a lot of options open if we have Gamzee and Nepeta alive and like doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. I think it would also be cool to, you know, have an opportunity for like Homestuck to be interfaced with in some meta fashion without like, because at the end of the day, I really do think the, the, the retcon happened just because Hussey regretted killing Vriska, which is like, yeah. <laughs> that you don't realize yeah. that until the Vriskagram, which is like Vriskagram was one of the most collaborative pieces of Homestuck. It had so many uh, mm. artists of the day working on it. And it was all in service of like <laughs> it sucks. And then Hussey makes like Vriska yell at parenthesis Vriska. And it's just so transparent that it's like, oh, all of this good stuff was for a stupid purpose. Which is like uh, fair to be fair, that's like Homestuck's thing. But this is a stupid purpose in not in the like this is frivolous and normally would like infuriate readers. This is stupid because like the idea is dumb (laughs) right but yeah that's all i have about the retcon it's gonna be nice to like you know have a a podcast that didn't take two fucking hours to record yeah i'm Um, i'm I'm actually okay with us finishing within like an hour and a half honestly right (laughs) this is the shortest one but also this is probably the best episode that i i feel about because we we Made the most changes, I think, but they were all like, because this is kind of what all of the previous episodes have been leading up to. Because after this, it's just sort of, you know, killing Lord English, some Dave Epita, you know, so tying it's, it's house tying everything cleaning. up. It's yes, house cleaning. It, it is. Yeah, it's the, it's just sort of the climax, and yeah. God knows we love to climax. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, no, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> uh, have you ever regretted saying something? This is unrelated. Have you ever regretted saying something as soon as you said it? But uh, of course not. No, never. Not a not a single never, time ever. So uh, for the viewers at home, uh, thank you for listening. I'm sorry this was shorter for us here. Thank fucking god, it was shorter. God damn. <laughs> Um, I do want to say oh, at yeah. the end, uh, thanks for listening. Um, uh, everyone who is like commented, I appreciate you. Uh, I read all the comments. I read every single fucking one of them. Um, I up like the, the ones that I enjoy and you know, I, I have some notes that I've written. We might do, we might do a response video on some of the comments that are like worth responding to. Um, but thank you everyone who's like listened along. I see a lot of familiar faces in the premieres. Um, we're going to be posting more bonus episodes to the Patreon. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I didn't expect this to be like as big as it was, but a lot of people seem to like the idea of like a critical analysis, long form of Homestuck. And, uh, yeah, so thank you, everyone, who's listened. Um, If you've listened right now, if you're listening right now at home, I want you to do something for me. Do it for JoJo. I want you to raise your hand up. I want you to reach around to your back and give yourself a little pat on the back. I think you'll be surprised about how good that feels. Just pat yourself on the back literally right now. Do it. Mm, Yeah, that feels good. Well, no. (laughs) I I went too far. I'm sorry. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have anything to say to the, the humble viewers at home before we abscond? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, this is, this has been, I've been surprised at how, uh, into this people have gotten, gotten and how like much attention it's gotten. I'm, I, this is a fun project. Like I am, I'm much more into hype swap stuff than, Homestuck proper stuff, uh, being, you know, that I'm working on Friends Him 2 right now and all that, and just, I like Hive Swap better, 
but you know this has been fun i i it's been really interesting to kind of go through and like retool elements of the comic and like while i understand that you know not everyone is going to be happy with the way we've changed things the cool thing about this this whole process is you don't have to be like this is our this is the version of the comic we would we would want to like come up with uh after some editing but like there's literally infinite possibilities which is one of the really cool things about this fandom so uh, i'm really i'm really happy that people have been engaging with this and like for the most part have really you know been into into talking this stuff through and like a pretty generally positive reception for a lot of the the comments that we've had so i uh I've had a really good time with this and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing it to the end. Yeah. Bucky. What do you have to say to the viewers? I don't know you. That's my purse. <laughs> uh, and then Bucky collectively kicks everyone in the balls. <laughs> Pocket sand. <laughs> That's my purse. Uh, I don't know. I don't you. have anything. In- <laughs> I don't have anything intelligent to say. Uh, I That's like read. I also <laughs> read the comments. Uh, I try to <laughs> hang out at the premieres. I'm gonna have a more regular work schedule from Yay. now on, so I'll be Yay. able to hang out at the premieres and such. Right. Fuck you. Uh, I'm also glad this is under two hours. That's it. That's- Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, Bobby. That's all I got. Oh yeah. The only home stuck I know is the time the front door got locked. Quit reading those uh-huh. web comics, boy. I'm going to take your way your computer. <laughs> Bobby, I found pre- gray. What's all this gray stuff on the sink? God. You got to pronounce web comics like it's two words. Like, web, web comics. comic. <laughs> Bobby, uh... Oh, I won't take you to, if you don't stop, if you don't stop that, Bobby, I won't take you to Yomacon. (laughs) 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 I told you, son, you got to seal the grave. Hot damn, those are the biggest candy (laughs) corn. Wow, Hank Hill, thanks for coming out. Uh, Completely got off the rails. (laughs) This has been the, um... The yeah, uh, yeah. Fuck this. I'm I'm ending this. This sucks. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Da 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 da. Rewriting Homestuck is a podcast by JoJo McLovin, Janaya Riley, and Bucky Grant, hosted and produced by me, JoJo. Please follow the links in the description to each collaborator's Twitter and subscribe on YouTube.